and now we are going to see individual disorders. So today we are going to see panic disorder. Panic disorder is also known as episodic paroxysmal anxiety. So from the name you can understand it comes like an episode and that's what you can get from this name. So the main feature of Diagnosing of panic disorder is recurrent panic attacks. So that is one of the important thing, recurrent panic attacks. So you should know what is a panic attack. Now I can tell you, if you ask a patient with panic disorder about his first panic attack, it's almost sure that he'll be able to clearly describe the time, date, the event, everything because it is such a terrifying experience. You should really ask a patient with a panic attack how it was. It is like one of the most terrifying experience. Now there are some features of panic attacks. One, it has an abrupt onset. Panic attack usually happen abrupt, so like an abrupt sudden onset. It usually occurs in unpredictable situations when there is seemingly no apparent danger. So that is another feature. It occurs abruptly, suddenly. It may occur in a situation when there is seemingly no apparent danger. Sometimes you may be sitting in a class, sometimes you may be walking, sometimes you may be sleeping, Sometimes you may be traveling in a bus, etc. And suddenly the symptoms happen. And when it happens, it peaks in few minutes. Within few minutes, maybe says like four or five minutes, it reaches a peak. It lasts for several minutes say like 15 to 20, 30 minutes, 15, 20 minutes it lasts and then it gradually settles. So this is known as a crescendo, decrescendo pattern that is it comes, peaks a minutes, lasts for several times then may dies. So this is known as crescendo decrescendo pattern but during that period the subject will be having an intense suffering during that period subject will be really fed up with that period it will have an intense suffering that few minutes or 20-30 minutes, minutes will be a period of intense suffering now what are the symptoms so DSM-5 has uh, mentioned about 13 symptoms and they say that four or more should be there. So among these 13 symptoms, four or more should be there. That is what DSM-5 says. You need not remember like the in the chronological order of the 13 symptoms, etc. But you should have an idea. For that, you should know that these are mainly somatic or autonomic intense symptoms. So when I am going to tell you the symptoms, when you see, you will understand that these are mostly somatic and autonomic intense symptoms. So let us see what are those symptoms. One is palpitation. The subject will feel that the heart is pounding like anything. Next can be sweating. There will be sweating or drenching of sweats that can happen. There can be a trembling or shaking. The subject will feel like intense uh, feeling of uh, trembling or uh, shaking can happen to subjects. There can be breathlessness. The subject will feel like a shortness of breath. The breath is going or shortness. A shortness of breath will be there in that subject. Then there will be choking sensation. There can be chest pain or chest discomfort. There can be nausea or abdominal discomfort. 
sometimes what is told like butterflies in the stomach so subject will feel like uh, something turning around or a butterflies like sensation in the stomach so that is there there will be dizziness or unsteadiness the subject may not faint but they feel like uh, feeling going dizzy or unsteady this can happen sometimes in this uh, individuals there can be chills or hot flushes there can be numbness that is or paresthesia that is tingling sensation etc the subject will feel like uh, paresthesia or numbness or tingling sensations in the body two other words you should remember is derealization 